Alright guys, welcome to this video. Uh, we're just going to go through a couple things for a Daisy standalone. A couple little tweaks um, to help improve your gameplay. Not really gameplay, but just experience with the game. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is how to get some um, data on your screen to help you interact with the game a little quicker. So we'll show that here. So first we're going to go to daisytv.com. And you're, you're going to scroll down this page here. Uh, you scroll on the very bottom and you go Daisy Overlay. Uh, a lot of people probably don't know about this. Maybe some people do, but uh, I didn't know about this. I was kind of searching around and found this. And there's even a guide how to set this up. But I'm going to kind of show you how to do this. This is for Steam. Steam Overlay. So what you can do is you can click your game. As you can see here, they got a couple different versions. You can play Epoch or Origins Mod or Zero, which doesn't really work anymore. But in the basic mod. So you can click Standalone. In this page right here, you're going to copy this link right here. That's what you need. So you're going to close that and go into your Steam profiles, into settings, and the web browser in the bottom. And then you're going to copy this link right here. Take that out of there. Paste that link in there. Click OK. So just double check, make sure that we did that right. So the link's there. Now when you start your game up, let's see here, we're going to run that up here. When you start the game up, what you should see is obviously your game will start normally. Mine's just start a bit goofy because it's going to start in windowed mode. If it'll launch. Let's see here. Should be able to get this one share out when I started. It's just a little slow. This is a good trick to get you some stats, data, wiki up on the screen. Well, you're still in game, you're still able to see move around, and, uh, and you're still able to see what's going on. You're not alt tapping all the game. If you do have du dual monitors, it's nice, then you can kind of keep the screen up, but. For the people that don't have dual monitors, uh, this is a great option because you don't alt tab out of the game, you don't end up dead, or you're not sure why you end up dead due to a bug, maybe someone kills you. This will offer the option to still see what's going on in the game while you can actually peek around. And the good thing is it's quick, right? So it's just like normally using your normal Steam overlay to look at your friends list or anything else, you're going to click on the web browser, it's going to come up, you're going to hit click the other buttons to close your Steam browser and that's going to stay like that and we'll show you that in action here in a sec. Because my game takes a really long time to boot so... Eventually that will probably be fixed as we get more closer to beta and uh, closer to release. I'm sure the optimization for the game will get smoothed out and I think it will start running a lot more optimized than what it is. I have high hopes for the game. Arma 3 is very well optimized compared to what Arma 2 was, so I'm sure that when Daisy gets to its polished stage, it'll be a lot better than Arma 3. So. But that's a different topic. Okay. See, we're getting booted up here, so we're going to get in the game. There you go, you can see my character. As he's somewhat rendering in, eventually. There you go. Cooking tripod, gas mask. So here, when he hits the buttons, which for me it's shift tab default. And you can see that your friends list pops up. Then we hit web browser. Right? Everything's there now. It's all worked out. Everything's there. So we can hit shift tab again, close, bring it back up. So now we can click on any of the stuff we want. We want the manual, we want scopes. And it'll give us the scopes, the details, the milli dots. We want to back out of this, we can back out. We can close that, so for a little bit, as you can see, we'll still be able to see what's going on in the background. Obviously, the screen's going to take up some of it. We can move that around and shrink it down in the corner. You know, you can make it whatever, whatever size you want. And then you can see it's going to be left the same here. So there, so it, it consistently stays to wherever you leave it. Obviously, when you reboot Steam, it's going to change. 
by default it's going to be in the middle of the screen so we can go back uh, for example click on the map and you'll see we'll get an active map up here running uh, scroll mouse in to zoom in uh, the good thing with I survive maps is too is they offer an option even to use your own Android phone so that's kind of cool it fits right there's also a way to measure distance between point A and point B as you can see it's telling you how long how far thin something is so that's useful right so I mean, you can see you can look around the map you can zoom in you can see you can see we can see towers we can see loot spawns it shows all the same thing as any other uh, uh, zombie map or daisy map sorry but it works good you know, it offers you know, even the gu hunting guide there it goes Leggy. Takes you to the wiki, which will give you the breakdown on how to hunt. Give the breakdown on the animals, what they give you. You can go to the crafting guide. It is having some issues for whatever reason. It's flipping right there, but I'll let you back up. So you can go to the crafting guide, you need to find some crafting, you can look at it. You're done with it, you can close. You can put it back up. Easy. Takes you right back there. So set your home page. It's always gonna come up. That's the game you're playing primarily. It's gonna work for you. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be really simple. And I hope this tutorial helps, so see you guys next time.